Yes. Okay. Eighty nine, top seeded Illinois. Midwest Regional Finals against Syracuse, their fourth final four. Set a school record for wins of thirty one on a finish the season rank. Third. Okay. Okay. Illinois' fourth Final Four, is that what that says? What was that, huh? card, card nine? Yeah. Guys in red, I think. That's this team here. Okay. Oh boy. Alumni band today. Oh, really? Okay, thanks for the note. They, they come back once a year. They, they were supposed to have like 100, and they, they got some 40-some even with the weather. Wow. It's five till the hour. No. no. Huh? I, whatever you tell me, I'm going to just the opposite. No, I'm doing great. Yeah, I, I, I do. But I'm trying to lock in now. It's the game time now. I'm trying to lock in. You sound there. Huh? Yeah. All right. Uh, we got guys messing with our equipment. I can't concentrate. Yeah, you know, I'm trying to lock in here. Got a chance to work with Vern. Yes. International announcer. <laughs> Got an international announcer I'm working with here. The girl comes up and wants to ask him if he knows how to pronounce the names. <laughs> the guy's the greatest international name pronouncer in the world. She comes up here. she got one uh, Egyptian on the team and thinks that Vern's got a...
NCAA basketball on CBS today from Assembly Hall in Wilmington, Indiana. Big Ten encounter between the Fighting Illini, who come in with an 8 and 4 record, and the Indiana Hoosiers, 13 and 3. Let's check the lineups first for Illinois Cleotis Brown, Archibald, Bess Hawkins, Corey Bradford, and Sergio McLean. And for Indiana, Luke Recker, Lynn Washington gets the start today, Larry Richardson, Rob Turner, and A.J. Guyton. Bob Knight in his 28th season as the head coach of the Hoosiers. And Lon Kruger in his third. The officiating crew Ed Hightower, Ted Hillary, and Ron Zetcher. And we're under, underway with a 139th meeting between these two. Here's Sergio McClain. And he's picked up by Rob Turner. Bess Hawkins, large center. And they get it to Corey Bradford for the first basket. Of the game. Great backdoor cut. Hawkins is going to be played tight out front. Normally, a tall postman who's not used to being away from the basket has a hard time making that play, but a very good pass. A.J. Guyton now for Indiana. Trying to set up Wrecker on a curl move. Wrecker. Being guarded by Cleotis Brown, now the switch. And McLean picks him up. Lynn Washington getting his eighth start, first turnover for Indiana. Although Illinois is not a tall team, they've got some powerfully built players. Brown, Bradford, McLean, all extremely strong. So it's tough to go ahead and come off curl moves against them because they're powerful enough to fight over the screen. Archibald, the freshman, true freshman, back in the starting lineup. He's been on the bench for a couple of games. Long jumper taken in can by Cleotis Brown. How often do you see a cross-court pass set up off a double screen for a fadeaway jumper? Excellent offensive maneuver. And a 5-0 Illinois lead. Back to A.J. Guyton. McLean has him defensively. Record. Lynn Washington. Guarded by the freshman Archibald. Good coming. Too strong with the shot, but the follow goes through. And Indiana's first basket of the afternoon. Corey Bradford. McLean, who's played four different positions in Illinois. And he tries to save the ball, but Turner does a good job. Staying with it, Wrecker in the layup. And he'll shoot a free throw. And what happened on that play? McLean gave up his dribble at the wrong time. Now he is posted up down inside. Here you see a real nice job by Turner. Bounce pass. Wrecker, a good finisher at 6 6. Gets a touch foul. Good job by Rob Turner. Now you had Brown claiming that Wrecker pushed off with the right arm on the play, but I think a good solid play by Wrecker. Good finisher. Wrecker, a 72% free throw shooter, ties it now with a three point play. And we're notched at five, two minutes into the game. Bradford, Fess Hawkins, stepping out again, trying to set up Bradford down in low. 
Bradford with the feed to Hawkins for two. Good touch pass, good moving without the ball by Hawkins. Young man has really worked hard to get himself in condition to be able to play in this league. Titan with the dish to Lynn Washington who draws the foul. Archibald picks up his first. Good foul though by Archibald. Don't let that guy have the automatic two on the inside. And an excellent dish here by Guyton. Good hands. Washington goes up. Smart move to commit the foul on the play. Washington goes from a guy that's got an easy two there, Vern, to a guy that goes to the line only shooting 46%, so a high percentage play by Illinois. Shoots one more. So if he's shooting his average, he misses this one, right? I'm just going by the facts. That's what I said. Right on the money. Yep. Hawkins with the rebound. 7-6. Illinois. Bradford tries to go by Guyton. Picked up on the baseline by Larry Richardson. Now Hawkins again playing out top of the key. Hawkins being used as the outlet pass man. Leon loves to switch on that particular play. Turner picks up Brown. Leonis Brown. Is fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. Richardson gets there late, not quick enough to play against Brown. Tough matchup when you have these three players, Bradford, McLean, and, and Brown, because they're all strong enough to post you up inside, and they're quick enough to take you outside. So out of the three defensive players of Indiana, somebody's going to be caught in a mismatch there. Four points now for Cleotis Brown. Junior college transfer, Pittsburgh, Alabama, his hometown. He's had some big games so far this year. Started out with 14 against Wake Forest and should be a very solid score throughout his career at Illinois. 9.96 is the score. 3.84 for the Illini. They jumped out to a 5 0 lead. His record. Both teams playing solid man to man defense so far. Good step out by record. Tough shot on the baseline. Five points for Luke Recker, cuts the margin to one. Really nice bounce out play by Luke right there because he had no angle whatsoever on the drive. Tough shot to make, particularly using the glass. McLean and Bradford. Hawkins set some solid wide screens down inside. Leonis Brown guarded by Recker. Makes the shot off the uh, Hawkins with a nice offensive board. The tip no good. Here comes A.J. Guyton for Indiana. And a chance for the Hoosiers to get the lead. Record, Bradford defensively. Luke Record at 27 against Notre Dame. You can see today he's an offensive minded, really looking to put the shot up. And he is a tough matchup at 6 6 because he's so versatile. Bradford from the corner, in and out, over the back. Foul up Leonis Brown. Good blocking out by Indiana. Now, when you look at these two teams statistically, there is one huge advantage that Illinois has, and that is in the rebounding edge. They're plus 8.4, and Indiana right at about a neutral situation rebounding. But so far, with good blocking out, Indiana's been able to take that superiority away. Second foul on Cleotis Brown, and Lon Kruger's going to his bench. Arius Davis getting ready to come in. Davis coming off a huge game against Clemson, and probably the reason he's in there to try to get some outside shooting. Time called, 15.53 to go, first half. Indiana by one. Who did Davis come in for? I don't know. Okay. Well, let's see yeah. who's, who's... He's got Bradford, uh, Archibald, Brown, I bet. It looks like Brown's standing on the outside. Yeah. Let's see. Because yeah, this is McLean right behind this guy. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Now Brown's standing up. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, it looks like Brown's out. Yeah, two fouls. A 
Assembly Hall, Bloomington, Indiana. Indiana leading 10-9 over the Fighting Illini. Lon Kruger in his third coach, a head year as head coach at uh, Illinois, of course, previously brought Florida to the Final Four and longtime coach at Kansas State. His team eight and four. And their first Big Ten encounter this afternoon. Arius Davis off the bench for uh, Illinois. A little one-two-two zone now being played by Illinois on the out of bounds, and they stay right with it. Showing zone for the first time today. Luke Recker gets it in the hands of Turner. Now the entry pass, they kick it back outside. Richardson goes to A.J. Guyton, who has been very cold in the last three weeks, or three games. Loose ball, grabbed by Indiana, long jumper, no. Indiana with a one-point lead. They fell behind 5-0. Have come back behind the play of Luke Record, is scoring a record. And a foul just committed. Indiana will throw it in bounds. Well, Fern, you probably don't see a team with a rebounding advantage of nine over their opponents. And Indiana, not a good rebounding team, just got five in a row there and still couldn't score. Six attempts at the basket and can't connect. 10-9 to score. Again, a five-point deficit for the Hoosiers. They are playing their second Big Ten game. They got thumped by Iowa on the road on New Year's Eve, and Illinois opening its Big Ten play this afternoon in Assembly Hall. On the floor, Brown, Archibald, Hawkins, Bradford, and McLean for Illinois. And you saw the five on the floor for Indiana. Long jumper from Corey Bradford, number 13. 10-9 is the score, just under 15 to go in the first half. Now Luke Recker, who has seven points. And with this outside shooting, Illinois stays in the, in the zone defense. They're matching up out of it, although they show a 2-3 when they start out. A.J. Guyton, number 25. Indiana like to get the ball down inside against this zone. Cut some seams. There's record. There it is. A.J. Guyton. These two leading scorers for the Hoosiers have been cold the last couple of games, particularly in that loss to Iowa. And record off the mark with the long shot. Archibald almost gets it stripped. Turner's got some upper body strength as well, not just McLean out there with the upper body. Lon Kruger going back to his bench here at the next uh, dead ball. Well, we haven't seen William Gladness in the game yet, and if they keep getting the ball to Hawkins, we'll probably see Gladness, who's the number one shot blocker for Indiana. Gives him a little bit more size. Fess Hawkins with the last basket. He's got four. His record. <laughs> Misfire from over the back. And an over the back foul. Big Ten standings, and Billy, what a strong league this is well, this year. Well, when you look up and down this league, I don't think there's any question you're going to see six teams minimum from the Big Ten in this year's NCAA tournament. And I think the difference between the number one team in the league and the number six team in the league is going to be uh, microscopic. It's going to be similar to last year when uh, this Illinois team right here tied with Michigan State for the championship. But uh, there are teams that, uh, based on what I've seen so far this year, look like they can play against almost anybody in the country. I don't think they have any of the, the upper echelon teams, maybe four, top four or five in the country, but underneath that, there are six or seven teams in this league can play with anybody left. Bobby Knight goes to William Gladness. He's on the floor number 30 in uh, Lon Kruger during the dead ball. But Victor Chudab... Chukadebe. I knew, I knew. Now you are the international <laughs> superstar of ice skating names. <laughs> we bring in one guy oh, with an odd dear. name. Oh, I was bragging on you for two days, Bird. Do I get another shot? No, that's okay. it. One shot, you're a pro. Kropolya's in here. He's a young man from Sarajevo. Well, that was an easy one. Well, I, I, I admit that. Your other, you, you've been to Sarajevo <laughs> for ice skating or something, so you should know oh. a Kropolya. I bring a guy in from Nigeria. Do they have any ice skaters in Nigeria? No, Probably no, not. No. Okay, that was your that was your excuse on that. We'll you on that all afternoon. Oh boy. Oh. First big chance to work with you and 11-10 is the score. Good hit ahead by Bradford. Sergio McLean just inside the three-point arc. There's Kripalia over the back. Tips it to Bradford. Bradford too strong. Demir Kripalia with a rebound. That's where he's given them such help on the bench. He really has. Uh, 11 big rebounds in their last ball game and a win against uh, Clemson. Neither team really.
really draining anything from the outside, getting good shots. AJ Guyton. Boy, and you can see the Illinois zone defense backing back in. They're going to say, you know, we're going to keep putting it, going back inside if Indiana doesn't show that they can hit something. Gladness. Luke Brecker, number four. And Gladness gets it to the baseline. Coming in off the bench, Cole buries the first one. Senior from West Memphis, Arkansas, and that gives Indiana a one-point edge at 12-11. You can see Davis getting a little bit more respect that scored 16 points all year long, gets in the Clemson game, hits for 20, so record staying right with him. Loose ball picked up by Rob Turner. Underneath Lynn Washington, too strong with a short jumper. Record puts it back in. Chukadebe can't guard both sides of the lane right there, and Wrecker again showing that he can get up on that offensive glass. Wrecker goes for the steal. Good call. And yes, indeed, off the hands of Arias Davis. Good call. Bob Knight has to love that hustle by Wrecker. 14-11, Indiana Legion, just under the 12-minute mark. Indiana leads it by three. Bob Knight, 58 years of age in his 28th year as head coach in Bloomington, and Lon Kruger in his third season as the head coach of the Fighting Illini. Bob at 58, you gotta figure he gets 800 wins based on the way he normally wins by age 61, and gets 900 to become the all-timer by age 65 if he uh, desires to stay in coaching that long. It's not beyond the realm of possibility. It's amazing what guys 58 years of age can come to do. Absolutely, he's uh, covered it all in his time here at IU. I was thinking more about you. 14-11. Oh. We're the same age. I know Bob. that. Well, the same year. Let's make a trio out of it, shall we? Davis <laughs> almost <laughs> losing it out of bounds. Here's Mast, who's on the floor now for Sergio McLean. Arius Davis. Boy, ball handling so shaky for Illinois right now. Krapalia misses from way outside. Nice block out by Gladness. With the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Chevy will make it. Today, and watching this game so far, I, you almost get the feeling that shooting is a lost art. I mean, guys are getting wide open looks and cannot hit a normal jump shot. Indiana, one of its last 11 from the field. Here's Guyton. 14 point average, but boy, the points have been tough to come by in the last uh, three or four games. AJ's kind of just throwing the ball up at the basket. You don't see the good, confident follow through on his shot. In that shellacking they took at Iowa the other night, he was one of six in the field and a season low of two points. Yeah, two points, and uh, you know, he is the kind of guy that's good. There's it. There we go. Davis, who had yep. that confident game against Clemson, puts it on up there. Arias Davis, 20 points, and the win on the road at Clemson. Last outing for Illinois. That stopped a two-game losing streak for the Illini. Good idea by record. Tough pass. And Mast goes for the steal, saved by Guyton. Guyton with the penetration underneath. Gladness, no. Lynn Washington. I tell you, Capalier is some kind of a rebounder. Gets good position. Doesn't have the widest of bodies, but he's strong. He's going to be a good one. Bradford for two more. Now Bradford, That's a three-pointer. Excuse me, Bill. Yeah, Bradford's the kind of guy, even if he's missing them, he's going to keep shooting, and which is, I think as a score, you have to do. Record drives. Can't get the ball to fall. Saw Fife. Hit him right in the head. Dane Fife, the point guard, freshman from Michigan. And Bob Knight's team now trailing by three, 17-14 with 9.39 to go. And let's uh, talk about something here. With that Iowa win over Indiana the other day, Iowa now has five straight against Indiana. And this Illinois team has three straight against Indiana, including they beat them here twice, the last two times they've played them. Not many teams can say that over the years. Not at all. 17-14, let's check the lineup now for Lon Kruger's bunch. Sergio McLean is back in with uh, Mast in the backcourt. And Propalia, Lucas Johnson, and Chukadebe are up front. Dangerous thing for Illinois there, only having one guy back down court. I'm surprised that Guyton didn't come down and double team on McLean that time and force Illinois to bring somebody else back, a chance to get an easy steal. There's McLean. 
saved by Fess Hawkins. It's Hawkins on the floor instead of Chukabebe. It is Sergio McLean, yes. Mast, former walk-on. Ball taken down by Gladys for Indiana, 17-14, Illinois. And a foul off the ball on Hawkins. And that was that foul was created by Gladness working hard for the ball. Now Hawkins couldn't get in position, trying to hold him up. Good job by William Gladness. 16th foul. Gladness with four double doubles on the year. Just had one last year. Now Fife inbounds to Rob Turner. Gladness finds record. Here's Fife. Nice tap. Oh, Indiana's having trouble getting the ball down in the hole, though. Here's Fife again. Nice save by record. They are doing the job on the offensive glass, though. I mean, we had one occasion where they got five rebounds in a row. There's another occasion they get an opportunity for the putback and just cannot get anything to go down from the outside. Indiana's zip of seven from three-point range. And a three-point Illinois lead. That was the third turnover on Indiana. They turned it over 20 times in that loss. And they're not a team that turns it over a lot this year. And Illinois is a team that turns it over. That is one of their biggest weaknesses. Another walk in violation on the inside. This one called on Fess Hawkins. Billy was mentioning how he's played himself into shape. Two years ago when he was uh, at Illinois, he checked in at 300 pounds, had to spend the season getting academically correct and during that time uh, really worked on his weight he's down to 270 now 17 14 illinois and we talked about turnovers illinois has 96 more turnovers than assists hard to win ball games unless you're a great shooting team doing that and they are not a great shooting team so they kind of gut out wins good crossover Dighton gets one A.J. Guyton, junior from Peoria, Illinois. That's his first basket of the ball game. And McLean, this is going to be a blocking foul on Guyton. Not quite there in time, but again, I really fault A.J. for not going and picking up when he realizes that Illinois doesn't have anybody else to get the ball inside in bounds. 7.58 to go, first half. Just a bit nippy outside. 16 degrees the temperature, but with the wind, the wind chill at minus 17, and the winds howling through Indiana and Illinois and Michigan. Inside, 72 degrees and comfortable, but these two teams seem to be trying to emulate the outside temperatures. They're frigid. Yeah, I, I think that we ought to let them know that this is an indoor game that they're playing today. Both teams shooting right at 33%, which is abysmal shooting. There's McLean with the entry pass off Fess Hawkins. And another Indiana turnover, that's their fifth. Sergio's got to sit down on that pass and create a little better angle because Hawkins is, is not the quickest, the most nimble guy inside, so you got to make sure he's got the space. Turnover was on Illinois. Here's Fife in the backcourt. Gladness with the shot, not there. On the floor for Indiana, number 10, Antoine Randall L. With Guyton and Fife. And that shot. No good by Archibald. Rebound, A.J. Guyton. Leaves it for Antoine Randall. Starting quarterback for the Hoosier football team. Broke a bone in his right hand and missed the first month of basketball. A young man was uh, selected the freshman of the year in the uh, Big Ten. We saw Ronald Curry yesterday, the outstanding freshman quarterback for North Carolina, play uh, a little bit of that basketball game as well. Very difficult, I would think, though, for, 
for a guy to play quarterback as well as try to play big time college basketball. I mean, somewhere along the line, you are not possibly going to be able to maximize both of those sports trying to play both. This is his fifth game as uh, a member of a Bobby Knight squad in his first game. Bobby said, I like what I saw. He gathered the guys around immediately and began to tell them what to do. I'm not sure he knew what to do, but at least he was telling him something. Time, guys, time? Yeah, there's so much time necessary to be a college quarterback, and you know, during the, in, in working with those NFL guys, in terms of how much time off the field the quarterback spends in preparation. So you could just imagine how little time a guy, and then with spring football, and then in, in also the summer work that these guys do, it's hard to get your basketball game elevated. Cleotis Brown back in number 32. He's picked up nice defensive job by Fife. And aggressive defense by Randall L. Bradford short with the shot. Boy, that was some. And L got right underneath him there, and Bradford just couldn't get the shot off. He thought he had too much size for him. Fife kicks it left, and Guyton can't get it to fall. Here's a three on two break. McLean, who is not a natural point guard, loses it, but they get it underneath to Hawkins. One of the things you've got to do when you get a big man that's running the basket is defensively get down underneath the basket to protect it. Nobody from Indiana ran to the basket. Randall L. and McLean. Nice penetration and a scoop shot by Fife. Went right around Bradford on the play. Fife also an outstanding quarterback right. as well. A top quarterback in the state of Michigan. Clarkston, Michigan, his dad and brother both played basketball there in Ann Arbor. 2019 Indiana turnover. Oh, it's been deadly for Illinois. Find out which teams can make a run for the national championship in the new Sizzlin and Fizzlin feature at cbs.sportsline.com or on America's Online at keyword CBS Sportsline. Six turnovers. Illinois. Gladness out of the bench goes down to the far end of the bench. As far away from the coach as he could be. And I, I don't know what the words were said right there, but uh, he certainly knows that he's not probably going to be seeing much more time in his first half. So where Bobby Knight denies that he has a doghouse. Well, I, uh, I can't answer that. One. I didn't think he did. I mean, I don't know if he does or not, but I can tell you one thing. Gladness will probably not be seeing any time outside that end of the bench the rest of the half. McLean with the steal. Yes. Sergio McLean got it. His first basket. And that's the way Illinois scratches and claws to get themselves in the lead. You know, nothing pretty, but it was so play so hard. Beautiful scoop shot. A.J. Guyton now has six points. And Indiana has reclaimed the lead. Davis. Oh, beautiful shot and so tough. Right-handed shooter bouncing away, shooting against his body. But he's got some confidence. Junior from White Cross, Georgia, Arias Davis. Randall L. gets it to Guyton. And he tried to find Rob Turner. Guyton got up in the air. Tough thing to do inside unless you have a direct pass. Same play for Davis. Nothing there. McLean with the offensive board puts it in Bradford's hands. He's way off. He got hit on the arm. That ball should be Illinois' ball. It was either a block or a foul to get by with it. Fife doing a pretty good job defensively out there. But again, Bradford not shy to put up the jumpers. Michael Lewis has come on the floor now for Indiana. Illinois goes back to the zone defense. So Fife and Lewis in the backcourt. Got a lot of pretty good ball handlers on the floor right now for Indiana. Tom Geyer is also on the floor at the 43. There's the pass to Geyer. Up in the air, blocked and taken away by Fess Hawkins. Two point, Illinois lead. Skip pass, Davis. Nope. Rebound. Oh, Kapalia. there he is, Kapalia. You know, one of the things I really like about him is his basic instinct for rebounding. That ball he felt was coming up short, slid his feet over to get in an excellent position. You can see it right here. Shot goes up, and instead of just standing there watching, you see how he came all the way across the lane, gets a two-handed rebound, does a solid job. The young man played a lot of junior international basketball. He's got good instincts for rebounding. Damir Kripalya, born in Sarajevo. He and the family immigrated to the United States, to Rockford, Illinois, 
And uh, it had been decided to have him redshirt this season until seven games in. And they had such problems with power forward that uh, with the agreement of Kapali and his family, they decided to uh, get him in the lineup as a true freshman. Six rebounds already, Billy. Fans getting a little impatient here, wanting to see some offensive production from somebody. Guyton Fife. There's Michael Lewis, number 24 on the left wing. Lewis, Fife, and Guyton can all make a play. They need to keep the ball in their hands and let them get it to the open guy. McLean almost had the steal. There's a foul on Chukadebe. Victor Chukadebe underneath. Now, now, the problem is if they get it inside, nobody inside really is offensively structured to make a play. Here you see the top 25 teams, and as I said, none of the Big Ten teams are in that echelon with Cincinnati and Duke, and, and but the next batch, I, I'll tell you right, Wisconsin, even though they're 0-2 in the league, been very impressed with their play. Minnesota tough, saw them take Cincinnati on and play them right to the wire. Uh, there are six or seven teams in this league that are playing very, very good basketball. Indiana in the penalty and Lynn Washington. And remember, they have a postseason conference tournament championship this year. So, you know, when you start talking about everything but the first round there, there's uh, anybody could win that. Michigan snuck in and won it last year when it was unexpected. Lynn Washington cans two from the free throw line. And the margin is two. Game. Neither team hitting offensively, 37% to 33%. Look at the uh, donut that Indiana has drawn for three-point range, 0 for 8. Fern, I'll give you a little uh, history uh, session here. Okay. In 1953, Indiana won a national championship. On the year, they shot 36%, and people said, wow, can they shoot? They held opponents at that time to 29%. And when, and when the 40 championship team from Indiana won it, they shot 34% in that game, and people said that's the most amazing shooting display I've ever seen. So has the game changed or not? Indiana, not until 1958 did they have a team shoot over 40% on the year. So the game of basketball has really changed. Maybe we're regressing backwards now. And yeah, Illinois is a team. Bring on shoots. Steve Alford. Exactly. Huh? <laughs> Coming up on Pennzoil at the half, Jim Nance will have all the scores and highlights, plus a recap of the New England Jacksonville AFC wildcard game that's coming up at Pennzoil at the half. Michael Lewis puts it in the hands of record. Indiana trying for the tie or the lead. And you know, we're talking about Alford only played one year with a three-point shot. I mean, I can think of some guys in that era, in the 80s, uh, in, in the late 70s, that if the three-point shot were, is it could Pete Maravich? Just not, where did the shot go? It's hard to comprehend. This is not a long shot. Guys would be standing two, three feet behind there, drilling three-pointers now. And you see zones. We saw a zone yesterday packed in inside the foul line by Clemson, and guys still couldn't hit the jump shot. And today, the same kind of thing. Boy, if I were a kid and wanted to play basketball, I'd get out there behind the barn, start firing up some shots. There's room for you to play in this game. <laughs> Get at the far end of the uh, of the driveway. 26-24, under three to go. I really think that kids got involved in watching television to the point, seeing dunks, right. seeing plays in the lane, seeing a lot of fancy dribbling, and got away from the basics of shooting a boat, a simple shot. Cheap foul that time on Turner. That's his second, and it is the sixth team foul. Sergio McLean will inbound. Illinois identifies their problems at point guard and power forward in uh, McLean. Corey Bradford, who's got the ball in his hands right now, started the first eight games at the point. Second and time, McLean did not get the proper angle for the feed. Well, the turnovers have just been so costly for McLean and for Illinois. They're tied at 26. Illinois, 27 turnovers and a loss to Kansas. Lose by 10 and have 27 turnovers. It just, you can't make up for that. Guyton and Bradford is clipped on the jaw. Now it's a timeout. There's no foul going to be called here. How are they going to, where are they going to award possession? Now it's either a foul or it's Indiana's ball here. 
There's the hit underneath there, so it's got to be a foul. Caught him right in the Adam's apple, and you can see Bradford going down because basically, if you don't call a foul, it's got to be Indiana's ball. The ball was knocked loose. Bradford's still down. You know how that's got to hurt. Ooh. I mean, it wasn't that the blow was so strong, it's just where it was hit. Get your breath back. Ted Hillary called timeout. And yeah, it will he be said Indiana's it. ball. Now, watch this. Now, see, there's no timeout yet. No timeout yet. No timeout yet. Now, see, the ball is loose. He gives up the ball, then the timeout's called. It's got to be Indiana's ball. Bradford will sit and regather wow. himself. Oh, how about no, this? I, I, I mean, I knew what he called, right. but I don't agree with it. It was Ted Hillary who made the call. I mean, maybe some nice sportsmanship, but uh, he had given up possession of it. Just as a, as a sidelight to this game, Hillary and Ed Hightower were supposed to call the Purdue Minnesota game tonight at West Lafayette. And that, another Illinois Journal. That was a pass intended on inside for Lucas Johnson, but he turned his back because he assumed Arius. Davis, who has been shooting so well, was going to go all the way and put up a pure shot. Eight turnovers on Illinois. Tie game nearing the two-minute mark. First half. Here's Guyton. He's picked up eight first half points. I like the way Michael Lewis is looking inside to try to get the ball there. Again, though, when you get it inside, unless it's going to be Wrecker, who could finish off the play? Fife. Back to Guyton, entry pass. See, that's Washington. what I'm talking about. Yep. See, the ball got inside exactly where Bob Knight would want it, but there's no one in there that can finish the play. Tussle for the ball. Lucas Johnson on the floor for Illinois, the freshman from. I mean, you look outside on that floor right now with Fife and Guyton and Wrecker and Lewis. Indiana has four guys that can really thread the ball inside for some good passing. Basically, what they might have to do is to start getting record moving without the ball inside that zone and get the ball to him because he can score. In Washington, it's the perfect pass. He's three feet from the basket. Can't deliver. Three seconds on the shot clock. Solid screen. Record get the jump shot off quickly. Got to get it off quickly. Guyton. Good defense in and out. Loose ball, Kripalia with another rebound. That's seven rebounds for Demir Kripalia. And we've got 90 seconds to go before the break. Sergio McLean, A.J. Guyton guides him, guards him rather. Both young men played high school ball in Peoria, Illinois. How about that quick release? Oh. Davis misses, Guyton. Yes. AJ does something that borders on being an illegal dribble there. He just holds the ball in the palm of his hand. It just it puts asleep the defender and then he turns it over. Time call. Billy referred to that crossover dribble perhaps being illegal. Well, watch what he does right here. He'll get the ball and he'll just get it to stop in his hand. See that? And that's a turnover. It's an illegal dribble. And there's he just freezes the defense right there. And by putting his hand kind of underneath the ball to control it and then put, pushing it on for a dribble, it's, uh, it's something that's supposed to be a point of emphasis this year. Almost impossible to defend it. Guyton has it down to a pretty solid move on his part, but it is an illegal dribble. McLean, Arius Davis. Back to Fess Hawkins. Now McLean guarded by Guyton. Under 50 seconds to go in the first half. In and out for Bradford. And the push off foul called on Luke Record. And who was underneath that basket again? An excellent offensive rebounding position, Kripalia. The personal foul, Indiana. Number four, Luke Record. 
Here we start talking about Vern, these various conferences. I don't think there's any question as far as quality depth. The Big Ten is the conference this year in the country. Pac-10, interesting game there yesterday. UCLA, a young, two young teams, Arizona and UCLA, going to be better as the year goes on. But UCLA comes away with a win, and probably the most startling win to me yesterday was Auburn. I uh, got on Cliff Ellis a little bit for that preseason schedule, and it, rightfully so. I mean, it was not the strongest, but he just wore Tennessee out yesterday. And Auburn undefeated. Kripalia got the first, shoots one more. I really like this young man. Four points for Kapalia. We have uh, reached a tie for the fourth time in the game. We've got 11 lead changes. In the game in Illinois last year, Indiana was 22 down and came back only to lose at the end. But uh, this game has been very close the entire way. Lynn Washington, excuse me, Bill. There's record. Nope. Kapalia almost had another one. Loose ball. He'll get that one. Yes. Hell ball. Now, what the referees want to know, was there any possession? No, because they want to know if there's a change of the arrow. But in that particular case, it's Illinois' ball anyway. They had the arrow. 22 seconds before the break. I think they should be pressing right here. You know, Illinois only has one guy back to get the ball inbounds. The other three guys go deep. It's a great time to double team that inbounds pass, and maybe you can pick up a cheap steal. And you'll score then because you got a two on one under the basket. Here's Bradford. Five has it defensively. One second to go. McLean from way outside. The fighting Illini bust in from Champaign last night. It took them four hours. But they're here. And they've got to be pleased to go to the break tied at 28 28. That's the end of the first half. We are nuts. Jim Nance will be along with Pennzoil at the half right after this message. Bad offense, good defense we've seen. Well, I don't know. We just see guys that are having a hard time throwing the ball in the ocean, uh, shooting down in the 33% uh, tile of both basketball teams, and they're really having a struggle on, on the offensive end of the court. And here's a look at the Arthur Anderson halftime stats, Bill. Yeah, as I mentioned right there, 31% and 34%. Rebounding totals, uh, Indiana hanging with them, but Kripalier with 10 rebounds are really controlling the boards on his end. And the coach's edge in the first half. Well, here is something that's uh, kind of interesting that Indiana loves to do with the likes of Luke Recker. They love to set solid screens and have Recker come over the top on a curl, sometimes fake like he's coming over the top and then going back door cut. And then the, the, the great fade move that Indiana has used for so long, the fade out for the jump shot. The problem right now is they're not getting Recker open on the inside against the zone enough because he can score in there. CBS Sports coverage of NCAA men's basketball will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Can we go home now? offensive set double screen set Brown out there no way to get through to him he hits the jumper nice play 28 28 Indiana 0 for 10 for three and they went the last four minutes and 14 seconds without a field goal gladness back in the game so he did not return in the first half Got his probably little tongue lashing at halftime and gets a starting shot in the second half. Good record, nice drive, good defensive job by Hawkins, and it's saved by 
Brown on a nice Brown. save there. Yeah, Hawkins with an excellent timing on that block. In and out for Toyota's Brown. Brown got in a little foul trouble, came out of the game when he seemed to have some momentum in the first half. Record drills it, and he drills it right out of bounds. And that was Lewis that fired that one. Uh, Michael Lewis. Yeah, yeah, it was Lewis, and he threw that ball a little bit higher. You know, a guy coming towards him, and he threw a bullet. Lewis is the one guy that will snap back at Bobby Knight every once in a while. It's kind of interesting to watch that little by play. Hawkins by Sergio McLean. There's Brown posting up down and low. He had position. He didn't hit it. Bradford finds it. Coming off the screen, but he travels. Ten Illinois turnovers. Not bad for them, though. I mean, I realize that's ten and a half, but when you start talking about a team that's piled up as many as 25, 26 turnovers, Averaging 20 per game. Line probably is uh, somewhat pleased with that. Gladness, Wrecker, and Guyton, along with Larry Richardson, look underneath for Gladness. William Gladness, number 30, guarded by Hawkins. Hawkins stays right with him. The pass was telegraphed to Richardson. And Corey Bradford knocks it out of bounds for Illinois. Illinois is really going to pack things down inside. You don't get a lot of easy baskets down inside against them. Tough shot, and there is Hawkins again using that wide body. Rucker goes for the steal. It goes off his hands out of bounds, and the Illini get it back. You know, I really admire Hawkins. Uh, you mentioned Vern before about how he dedicated himself to get himself in shape. It's great to see a young kid do that. He's getting a lot of playing time. He's a very valuable player for this club. And this Illinois team, very young, lost all five starters from a year ago. Five seniors. Only one senior on the 11-man squad now. There's another turnover, however, and it's Sergio McLean. Five seniors who you would say, you know, decent talent, but not great talent. Becoming a Big Ten co-champion, though, really shows you what maturity can, can do and guys that'll listen, keep improving their game. Nice back pass. Gladness, good defensive job, and Archibald clears it, the freshman. Got to catch it first before you make a play. We are still tied at 28. We played two minutes of the second half. Nobody cutting to the ball. Yet another Illinois turnover, that's 12. Gladness, record, got it. Not pretty. Kind of a crazy fast break, and A.J. Guyton pulled up. I thought he was going to take a three with a four-on-one opportunity. That's this the first. Is amazing. No backcourt, ball touch. That was the first Indiana field goal since 414 remained in the opening half. 30 to 28, McLean off the mark. It didn't look like he was sure whether he wanted to bank that or go straight at the basket. So we'll try it again with yeah. the same result. Just cannot shoot the ball. Reach in foul, McLean. Monday on CBS, the show TV guide calls the year's most consistently hilarious comedy. Everybody Loves Raymond is on at a special time, 8 o'clock, 7 central. Capalier comes in, McLean out of the ball game. A lot of changes here. Brown out of the ball game, looking to see if he can get somebody to put the ball in the basket. Illinois trails Indiana by two. Here's Recker. No, he showed him the coach's edge, the little curl off the top. Recker had exactly what he wanted. Nate Mast. On at the point, Bradford, here's Tess Hawkins. They're joined by Capone, who had 10 first half rebounds. And Arius Davis, the quick shooting off guard. He finds Bradford. Underneath, Capone saves it. Good help that time by A.J. Guyton. They can't buy a basket. Nope. You know, the other thing, too, good shooters, when they shoot the ball, when it hits the rim, nice drive by Guyton. When it hits the rim, it comes off soft. You notice these shots, they come ripping out. A lot of spin on it. It shows that they're just not a good follow through, not good rotation on the shot. And obviously not the right direction because it's not going in. Seven and a half plus now for Illinois. They've missed their last 10 from the field. If I was getting, I'd keep putting that ball on the floor and going all the way to the hoop. He's been able to be very effective inside that uh, foul line area. Under 10 on the shot. Oh. 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 Whoa! Call it a banker first. The fans around here are laughing, knowing that that wasn't designed to go off the board. 
he's got the H. There's Geico doing the right thing, taking that ball to the little 12 to 15 foot jump shot. Eight rebounds for Hawkins. Here's Mast. Nope. There Gets a follow. Kripalia. Got a kind of an awkward jump shot, doesn't he? And the drought continues here in the blizzard of the Midwest. 32-30. Lewis to record. Nice pass. Nice move. I love Guyton inside. You know, he's not hitting the jumper. Young man played on the gold medal winning Goodwill Games team. He really can do some things on the inside. It's good to see him post up. That was pretty. Start to finish. 14 points. And another Illinois turnover. Great job by Michael Lewis. Maybe that's one of the reasons he can talk back to Bob Knight with that kind of hustle. 13 turnovers for the Fighting Illini. Indiana leads by four. I want you to watch A.J. Guyton as he's moving well without the ball. Eventually, Wrecker will find him on the inside, and then Guyton can explode. Excellent hands in there, and he can finish. As I said before, Indiana has some guys, Lewis being one of, that can find a man inside. But Guyton and Wrecker are the kind of guys that need to make the catches in there because they can make the plays. Here's Richardson Lewis. has problems in there, and here he goes again. Yep, so nice. They, they just can't finish with their big men. Here's McLean. Behind the back, spin move, no foul shots coming. Well, we mentioned Auburn a moment ago, one of three undefeated. Connecticut with another big game yesterday coming up in the Final Four. And that Duke team with that uh, big win over Maryland today. A Maryland team that they seem to have their number. Last year they just romped that Maryland twice, but I'll tell you what, Duke, Connecticut, Cincinnati, I mean, it would not surprise me at all to see those three around Deep, deep into the terms. McLean one for two. This trip to the free throw line. Here's Michael Lewis, number 24. Joined by Guyton Wrecker. Richardson picked up his third foul a moment ago, and William Gladness completes the five on the floor for Indiana. Back into the zone they go. Packing that zone back down in very deep. From the corner, Guyton, no, not this time. Kripalia has equaled his season high of 11 rebounds now. Notice he gets almost every rebound without having to explode high in the jump. Oh, there we go, Bradford. Not bashful, as I said, but Kripalia gets two-handed rebounds with positioning. Corey Bradford now has eight points. We're tied again at 34. Bradford on six straight games with double figures. Richardson for two. His first basket of the ball game. Under 14 to play, 36-34. Nice spin move by Hawkins. And a little dip under move by Hawkins. As I said before, not the quickest man in the world, but a very nice move on his part. Gets the most out of what his body will give him. That's 10 points, double figures now for Hawkins, one short of his season high. See, the zone is packed in at the foul line. In. Lewis can get a jump shot. Yes. yes, it was. He and is again. Excellent feeder on the inside. Lewis keeps his eyes up. Good bounce passing. He is really hitting the seams nicely there. Bob Knight has to be happy with that. There's that Duke win over Maryland earlier. Iowa over Northwestern. And he continues to win. Northwestern, the only team from the Big Ten that hasn't made that trip to the Final Four. Second foul on Hawkins. Now Kirk Haston making his first appearance of the ball game for Indiana, number 35. And Hawkins will get a rest. Gets a nice rest, and of course with two fouls, doesn't want a lot of time in his ball game, not wanting to pick up the third. Capolia coming out of the game as well. And Larry Richardson at the free throw line. It's a very young Illinois basketball team, but they seem to get along extremely well. One point Indiana lead. McLean guarded by Record. Nice job by Record. Yes, sir. Nice feed. 
And Chukabebe, Victor Chukabebe picks up the basket. And Illinois back on top. That is the first basket of the ball game for Chukadebe. Seemed like everybody from Indiana was mesmerized by Sergio McLean's move in the corner. Rucker in the corner, guarded by Archibald. Entry pass by Lewis again, and Richardson is fouled. Really getting that ball on the end. A real factor in the Big Ten for years to come. And back-to-back -back losses last couple of weeks to Kansas and Missouri. They went on the road and won that big game at Clemson. Well, they've been on the road for what must seem like months here, and they still have to go to Iowa before they return back home. So this would be a huge win if they can pull it off here to be 2-2 two and two on that extended road trip. There again, Bill, a nice pass from Lewis to Richardson. Eight turnovers now for Indiana. Well, if you're Bob Knight, and I see him walking down there holding his forehead right now, but what you got to say is, look, the guys are doing what I'm diagramming, only I don't have guys to execute it on the inside when they catch it. That is so frustrating. One point, Illinois lead. Their first Big Ten game of 99. Wrecker not staying with Davis. He may be a little tired out here. He's got to be careful. Davis pulls up and takes the three. It's too strong. Offensive board for Robert Archibald, and he's fouled by Hastings. I noticed that Wrecker is not moving with Davis and staying too far away from him. Now, he may be a little bit tired out there. He's played a, a, a lot of tough guys, and Illinois has used their bench. There's the rebound, the putback. No question about the foul. Robert Archibald, he's another of the uh, foreign players, the foreign contingent for Illinois. Archibald, a native Scott, moved to the St. Louis area for his senior year of high school. Started off the bench, or I mean, he came off the bench the first two games and really played well. Then they put him in the starting lineup and he slumped. And he's been struggling for the last uh, month. Now, Bob not giving Guyton a little bit of a rest. Haston, who's had some outstanding game, had three blocks against Kentucky, had a real good game against Temple with 12 and 9 and 10 and 10 against Utah, but it hasn't really broken out in this game. Archibald over at the line that trip. 38-37, still under 12 to go. And the zone packs in deeper and deeper almost every time down the floor. 1-2-2. Two, two. Fife back on the floor. Fife gave pretty good minutes in that first half. Record of Fife. Record takes long three-point. Good-looking shot. Versatile player. That is the first three-pointer of the ball. Yeah, one for 11. One for 11. Yep. Now the oop, the claim, no, another turnover. Pretty good angle for that lob pass. And I think that Davis is bleeding a little bit from the mouth. Luke Rucker from way outside. Eleven thirteen remaining in regulation, 40-38, Indiana on top. On top, and of course, they scored 20 points in the first half of this game, and they had only 16 in the first half against Kentucky. Battled back and put that game into overtime, but low scoring contest, and when you're 0 for 10 at halftime from three, that can happen. And there's record with two in a row. He's got the stroke. Luke Recker back-to-back -back threes. He's got 17 in the ballgame. Hard to believe a Mr. Indiana basketball couldn't shoot from the outside, huh? Indiana pick up a little defensive intensity as well right here. Very key possession for Illinois. McLean in the lane. Nope, but he will go to the free throw line. So strong. Sergio McLean, who last year on the Big Ten championship team was the sixth man, 
really a power forward, but asked to play at the point, and he has struggled. Let me give you a little example about last year compared to this year. Of the players coming back from Illinois last year, they scored 15 of the 156 points their team scored against Indiana. Indiana, conversely, of the 144 points they scored against Illinois, 119 of them returned this year. You know, so you're talking about 15 of 156 points is all that Lon Kruger has to work with in this game. Chukadebe and Archibald will sit for Lon Kruger. Kripalia back on the floor, and so is Fess Hawkins. And McLean at the free throw line. Cleotis Brown replaces Corey Bradford, so uh, Kruger going to his bench. And Brown averaging right at 12 points a game is going to have to do something for Illinois, I think, in the next few minutes. Pick up that point and scoring slap. There's Capalia almost with another rebound. McLean misfires on the free throw. It's a four-point edge with 10.34 to go. Hasty. Yes! One of the points of emphasis by Bob Knight today in the shoot-around was when the big guys get the ball inside, don't fool around with it, just turn and shoot. That freshman was listening. Six-point Indiana lead. Largest lead of the ball game for Ads McLean yeah. offensive. Fife had a very good first half defensively and picks right up there in the second half. Excellent footwork on the defensive end. You watch him right here, bouncing up his footwork, picks up the charge. Good job. Didn't play defense with his hands, played it with his feet, and it paid off. McLean, who has been plagued by turnover problems, commits his seventh of the ball game. Wrecker again! Three straight threes, good looking, positive follow through. How does that change a ball game when you make some shots, huh? Ron Kruger needs a timeout. Indiana with a very good run here. Luke Rucker three for three in the last couple of minutes. And now let's take a look at one of our Applebee's tournament favorites. The 1987 National Championship was a classic down to the wire finish. Indiana junior guard Keith Smart. Remember this, a 12-foot jumper, four seconds remaining. That gave the Hoosiers their fifth national title in a one-point win over Syracuse. You know, I didn't realize this till I was reading about, you know, the history of that particular game. I didn't realize that Keith scored 12 of the final 15 points in that game. He was the MOP, as they called it, in the final four there. And of course, that was the final four. We started talking about outside shooting. Steve Alford hit seven threes in that game. And remember, in the semifinals, Freddie Banks from Vegas hit 10 of 19 threes. So, uh, you know, at one time, college basketball did have some guys who could shoot the ball, as record's showing now. Record three of three from long range. He's got 20 points, and Indiana enjoys his largest lead. They are on an 11 to one run in the last 93 seconds. Vance Hawkins, guarded by Lynn Washington. There's those good hands of Kapalye. Six points for Kapalye. And that cuts the margin to seven, 48-41. Record left handed. I thought he was fouled on the play. No call whatsoever. Luke wanted it too. And on the other side, they do call the foul on Kripalya, his first and the team first. That was a nice 20-second timeout by Lon Kruger to say, let's go back inside. We're not hitting anything outside. Got to stem the tide here a little bit. Fife feed the Lewis offensive foul. His first. Well, we're talking about a guy that Lon Kruger was thinking about redshirting, who has been the most solid performer for him so far in the game. Now, here's what I talked about in the first half. Normally, Illinois runs three guys down court, nobody there to help the inbounds. Indiana was going to put two down there for it. During the nine minute mark, the seven point Indiana lead. Cleotis Brown had a quiet afternoon. Picked up those two quick fouls and never really has gotten into the flow of things. And there's another turnover. Nobody coming to meet the ball. And what Brown is doing, he's dribbling with no idea of where he wants to go with it. Then he picks up his dribble. And so consequently, he's got four of his teammates in no position to get a pass. Michael Lewis gets a rest and a nice round of applause. Did a good job. A.J. Guyton got a rest. 
I, I've, I've really enjoyed watching both of these coaches substitute today. They know they don't have power basketball teams, and they're trying to find the right guy for the right spot at the right time, and really doing a good job. Wrecker. Brown's having trouble on both ends of the floor, isn't he? His third foul. Top 10, well, obviously, we're going to see Duke get a few more votes, but I think Connecticut will hang in there this week. Cincinnati right behind him. Maryland probably going to drop a little bit, and Stanford moving on up. Arizona, they're going to drop a little bit. UCLA sneaks in a little bit. Indiana with a chance to hang in tight. North Carolina not impressive, but with a point differential in that uh, Clemson game probably hangs right in there. So I don't think we'll see a lot of movement outside of the, the top 10, but we may see some movement within it this week. Luke Recker in agony after he missed the first free throw. Has one more chance. 20 points. 8.38 to go. Now whenever I think of Indiana free throw shooters, I go back to Steve Alford again. In his career, he shot 596 of them, made 535 of them. Huh? I mean, he just reached out for those, get those foul shots and just be automatic. Nearing the eight minute mark, an eight point lead, Capaglia. Well, he is a competitor. He's just taking over leadership here, doing a lot of talking, grabbing rebounds. That time he put the ball on the floor from 20 feet and got it to the hoop. Two team fouls or a second foul on Haston and Capaglia back at the line. 11 rebounds, 10 of which came in the first half. Gets one and shoots one more. And boy, you know, one of the things that's so tough when you have to scrap for every basket, you've got to be a good free throw shooting team. Illinois went in a stretch there where they missed some free throws that took points away from when they could have been still in the lead. Flat shot. Davis tries to save it, can't, picked up by Lynn Washington. Here's Fife with the ball in his hands. And Bradford has him defensively. Now they get it off to record. I think that Indiana right now ought to try to get that ball down inside some to Guyton. Pretty nice block. Off of Capone, Indiana ball. Guyton does a good job moving without the ball. Fife's a pretty good passer. I think we'll see Lewis back in there again shortly. Wrecker can pass as well, but Guyton's got to get himself open down inside. In the lane, Wrecker spins and uh, is fouled back to the free throw line. Luke Record becoming very difficult to guard here in this half. Stepped outside with the threes. Now he puts the ball on the floor. Moving well without the ball. And Cleotis Brown picks up his fourth foul, seventh team foul, Record at the line. You know, another thing that Brandy pointed out about the depth of the Big Ten this year, you cannot afford to lose a home game in this league. You know, Indiana loses on the road to Iowa. Right. Hey, a lot of people are going to lose to Iowa on the road. But when you're at home, you have got to win these basketball games. Indiana doing a pretty good job right now getting in control. And how tough is it to win here? Well, since Assembly Hall was constructed, the Hoosiers have won 84% of their Big Ten games. That doesn't count by conference. Wow! Oh, oh, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Washington stays right up there and stops the two-handed dunk, force him to go to the line. Paulier goes up. Nice job by Washington. Almost a clean block on a two-handed dunk attempt. And Papalia back at the line. Washington, the junior from San Jose, California. You notice where the hands were at the end of that free throw, right back down by his waist. Good free throw shooters and good outside shooters will keep that hand right up in the air on the follow through. That's why his sh shot is so flat. One of two for Krapalya. He's got eight points in the ball game to complement his 11 rebounds, but his team trails by eight.
Is this sponsored? Do I mention this? Okay, got it. Indiana went on an 11 to 1 run, helped in no small measure by Luke Recker's three point shooting. They lead by eight. Well, they were 0 for 10 from three at halftime. Now they're 3 for 13, meaning they're 3 for 3 in the second half. This young man right here is what uh, set it on fire. Nice job from the outside with the threes, and he's made himself tough to guard, moving without the ball and handling things well on the inside. Dane Fife, the freshman, number 11, and Fess Hawkins picked up a foul on Lynn Washington. Not a good idea there. Where is Washington going with the ball? on the foul line extended. The answer is nowhere. So why follow him? He's not dangerous from there. Eighth team foul. Washington at the line. He said in the first half a 46 percent free throw shooter and he was one out of two when he shot. Mm -hmm. What are the odds here? Uh, he makes one of two. Well, That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> Ten point lead. Ten point lead. Indiana really playing well in this stretch. Now what's so tough for Illinois? It's not a high scoring basketball team. They've got to play from behind. Nice back. Oh. The cut. Beauty. Did we see that in the first half? Yes. Exact same play. Bradford and Hawkins. Bob Knight cannot believe it. Excellent step out. Hawkins steps out. Throws right over the top. Nobody there from the weak side, but it had been pretty tough to get over there in time. Well executed play. Moore can't make it a three point effort, though. Bradford too strong with the free throw. Haston picked up his third foul. The lead is eight. And we have 7.20 to go in regulation. Illinois goes from the zone to man to man, keeps switching defenses. Record, nope. Get back out. Here's A.J. Guyton. Nice job by Washington to keep that ball alive. Foul away from the ball. McLean saying it was an illegal screen trying to fight his way over the top. But as long as Haston gets there in time with both feet planted, he has as much right to that spot as does McLean. That the fourth foul on Sergio McLean. It's the ninth team foul. And here is A.J. Guyton. 704 remaining. Tip by Washington into the hands of Hawkins. Nine rebounds for Hawkins to complement the 11 rebound effort of Kripalia for Illinois. Here's Kripalia top of the key. And the blocking foul called on Fife. Legitimate call. Fife didn't get over there in time. Kripalia again showing he can put that ball on the floor and take it to the basket. You almost think that uh, Illinois has got to come back with Davis. Now you notice here, no question about it, never got planted, stuck that shoulder out. You almost think that Davis has got to come back in the ball game here because at 650, looking at the you know a 10 point margin, they're down. Uh, they got it to eight now. These free throws so important for Illinois. Saw that he's four of seven today. Yep. And the lead stays at eight for Indiana. Michael Lewis back on the floor for Bobby Knight. He's number 24 and he's got the ball in his hands here. Wrecker. Lucas Johnson goes to the floor and makes the steal. Here's Bradford at the other end. Nice play. Very good. Put that ball in his left hand. No way for Lewis to get across the body. Protected it. Lucas Johnson went down to make the steal, and the lead is six. Johnson on Wrecker. You can see what Lon Kruger wanted a little taller guy on him. Take away that angle for that jump shot. Guyton. Backs out, picked up by McLean, who plays with four fouls. Record. Pump fake. Oh, beauty. Nice left handed pass. Washington foul as he goes up. Well, we see in the inside, Hawkins doing the thing, same thing to Washington that Washington did down on the other end of the floors. Not give up that easy two. Fourth foul on Hawkins. Nice patience on that play and by, uh, by Guyton not to try to force the shot. Lynn Washington at the line. Victor Chukadebe getting ready to come back on the floor now for Hawkins. 
Well, Illinois could not hit a free throw. Here you have Indiana's poorest free throw shooter just drilling them. Hawkins to the bench. Chukabebe back on the floor. The lead 7, 54, 47. Well, a lot being asked of Bradford right now for Illinois to come up with points. Hey, hits uh, four in a row. And the lead back to eight. Six to go. Too early to think three. But not too early to start making sure you don't waste a lot of time on the clock trying to get off good shots. Now Bradford guarded by Lewis. Here's Lucas Johnson into the lane. Too strong with the shot. Rebound, Lynn Washington. It's the way to get playing time in Indiana. Rob Turner back to Wrecker. Pump fake, drive, nice. No look pass underneath. And Washington wasn't quite ready for it. He, he really is not capable, uh, Vern, and this is not to knock the kid because he's playing good basketball. He's not capable of making a play in the low post. But he's going to go to the foul line again, as I said, with four in a row here. He's given some solid minutes. Yeah, 37 39 field goal percentage so far. That's the sports line stat of the game. Complete college basketball coverage. We invite you to go to cbs.sportsline.com. Over 10 team fouls now. Here's Washington. He's five in wearing, a row. wearing out the odds. Five Ooh. in a row. All right. What do you think? Came in making 12 of 26 on the year, and he's now hit five in a row. Kripalia with another rebound. Nine point margin. Five and a half to go in regulation. Bradford with the entry pass. McLean fouled hard. He is so strong. Who are they going to call that one on? Is it Washington or is it Guyton? When we start talking about free throw shooting, you know, you find Illinois just down nine points, but they've missed what seems to me like uh, eight or nine free throws here in this half. McLean gets the first. Nice follow through. Sergio's nightmare game this year was against GW. He was 8 for 11. And again, the best that Illinois can do is one out of two from the line. Not enough when you're down. Indiana up by eight. That'll go out of bounds off of Chukadebe's foot. His favorite sport other than basketball is soccer. You find uh, many of the Nigerians. Remember the lives you watch Exactly. Yes, indeed. And, and one of the reasons they usually have very good footwork in basketball. Johnson almost with another pickoff. He's against a quicker man now. Here's Guyton outside to Rob Turner. And Luke Record. Under five. <laughs> Illinois' first Big Ten encounter of the season. Indiana 13 3 for the year, but they dropped their first off. Oh, nice block by Kripalia. You like him, huh? Oh, yeah, I really do. A freshman with a lot of promise. Johnson spots up with the three. Got it. Lucas Johnson called for it. Bradford found it. Nice job by Bradford, because Bradford had a pretty good shot himself. Nice unselfish play. Three-pointer for Lucas Johnson cuts the margin to five. They just hang around and hang around, don't they? Lucas Johnson on Rucker. This is an interesting matchup. You can see what the object was. Get a taller man on him. Johnson actually pushed Rucker after the shot. No call. Kripalia does a nice job of blocking out. Here's McLean. Kripalia calls for it. Goes baseline on Washington. Kicks it outside. Chukadebe. No way. Nope. He didn't give that a chance when he put it up there. Washington protects the ball. Back to Lewis. 3.45 to go. Turner. Oh, he made it work. Kapade got hit in the chest that time. He's down, but Turner is strong. We saw his flash of brilliance last year against Kentucky. 
He hasn't had any game quite like that, but that was quite an offensive play there. Grapaglia remains on the floor. Time call, 3.33 to go. Teeth on CBS. 58 51, 3.33 to go. McLean and Bradford in the backcourt. Grapaglia, Chukadebe, and Lucas Johnson complete the five on the floor for Illinois. You notice how Illinois let that ball bounce on up the floor. I really think if you're scouting this team, you're going to go ahead and take advantage of the fact that they send three guys deep and only two bring it in. There's Bradford. I tell you, that young guy averages 19 a game when he plays two guard, averages 11 a game when he has a point guard responsibility. He's going to be a big scorer because he just has confidence, even when he's missing, to take that next shot. 14 points for Bradford today. Seven straight double figure scoring games for him. Michael Lewis, McLean plays with four fouls. Guyton, dish underneath to Larry Richardson. Works hard. Kapalya almost had his 14th rebound. It goes into the hands of Lucas Johnson. Well, how often do you see him if you start charting him? How often do you see him with a good inside blockout position? Talk about a key basket coming up here. Kapalya to McLean. Two and a half to go. Bradford cuts off a double screen. Good block. Try to beat too many people. Yep. 2.20 to go. Indiana tries to even its Big Ten record at one and one. Lewis, no. Kripalia, another board. He just moves people aside. I mean, we're not talking about a guy with a 40-inch vertical leap. We're talking about a guy that is using his head, getting good blockout position. It's tough. 6'8", 215-pound freshman, Damir Kripalia. Tonight on CBS, knowing the junkies will do anything for a fix on CBS. <laughs> Timeouts remaining. Indiana's yep. got plenty. They got two 20s and two fulls. Vern, I know you're going to be doing a big football game next weekend. I know how important it is to you. Let me give you a little uh, history there on that football. All right, Bill. Amos Alonzo Stagg, mm -hmm. great football coach at the University of Chicago, is the guy that introduced basketball to the Big Ten. He learned about basketball from James Naismith. You know what Naismith did? Not only invented the game of basketball, he invented the football helmet. Without Naismith, you guys are out of business in football. You're spending way too much time on airplanes. Oh, no. The depth of your knowledge continues to <laughs> that inspire <will> yeah. me. <laughs> Five points, 90 seconds to go. Big 17 turnover. turnovers, right? Huge turnover. Here's Rob Turner. Lewis, the shot clock down to 10. Luke Record back to Guyton. Takes the jumper. Nope. His hands. That's it board for Richardson. Dangerous pass. Whoops. And Kripalia is going to get called for the foul. I just think of Richardson's play there. He takes the chance to throw a cross-court pass that, if picked off, leads to an easy two for Illinois. We just showed timeouts remaining. They've got two 20-second timeouts and two fulls. If anything, hang on to the ball till you find the proper pass or call the timeout. A possession is so important here with just a minute and four to go. Michael Lewis, the junior from Jasper, Indiana, shoots two. Makes the first, his first point of the game. Leading, is, leading scorer in high school in the state of Indiana, so you know he can drill it. Yeah, he averaged, what, 31? 30, yeah, year. almost yeah. 32 points a game. One of two and a six-point margin, under a minute. Bradford, another turnover. 18. Okay, the ball's more important here than extra points. Smart move by Lewis. If that's McLean, that's five. Well, that means Davis will come in the ball game, so you're going to go ahead and give up. Sergio McLean, who has not been shooting the ball, get Davis on the floor. You're going to have to shoot threes the rest of the way. And here comes Davis. Now, it's asking a lot for a guy who's been sitting down for quite some time here to come in there and 
start throwing it up, but uh, that's what he's going to have to do. Lewis, an 80% free throw shooter last year, right about that again this year. Young guy is uh, doing the job out there. Good floor general. Hands vote, lead is eight. Now you got to be thinking three here if you're Illinois. Bradford, no way off balance. Not the play. Had Davis out on the wing. Wrecker. Lewis. Try to get fouled. That's it. Is that all? Yep. Good, solid game, however. Hawkins did a fine job out there today. Cleotis Brown's going to come back on the floor for Fess Hawkins, who's on the bench with his fifth foul. Really, the probably the fine difference between Illinois being able to win a game like this today and not winning it is a guy like Brown has got to come up with a much bigger game. I'm not talking about 25 points, but I'm talking about like a solid 18 or so. And he really struggled the entire ball game. Misfire for Lewis. Yeah, Bobby Knight and the Hoosiers go on the road for their next two games at Michigan, at Ohio State. We talk about the guard shooting free throws. William Avery and Trajan Langdon from Duke both shooting over nine, right around 90 percent. You get down a wire ball game like this, you've got your guards that can make those free throws. It's just a very difficult to overcome a deficit. How good can this Indiana team become? Well, I think that they're one player away, and we think about Jason Collier going down to Georgia Tech. If they had Jason Collier, I'd put them up there with anybody. Obviously, they don't have, so they got to work around that. Nobody any smarter than this guy right here to try to figure out how to go ahead and fill in that hole. He's probably going to have to do it as we saw today with a lot of substitutions because he doesn't have any one guy that can fill that fifth position for him on the inside. Illinois, Kripalia kicks it outside to Lucas Johnson. Back to Davis for three. No. That was Turner with a strong rebound inside. Only about six, two and a half. But he went up there among everybody and pulled it off. Indiana's going to win this basketball game. Well, they will go to 14 and 3. Antoine Randall getting ready to come back in. Lon Kruger's bunch will fall to 8 and 5. Well, the late Jim Valvano said about the NCAA tournament, the object is to survive and advance. That may be the, the call this year for the Big Ten. Survive and advance and just keep going down the road because people are going to lose games in this league. Rob Turner misses the first. Dyke sits down. Solid basketball game. Needs to get his confidence back in his outside shot. Other than that, he's very solid today. Wrecker, who really turned this game around, Vern, with those jump shots from the outside. Hit those three threes during an 11 to 1 run in a 90 second span. Final 20 seconds. Luke Jimenez is on the floor for the first time tonight. There's Davis in and out. The rebound chased down by Michael Lewis. Hang on to the ball. Well, the Hoosiers will go to one and one in Big Ten play. Their season record to 14 and three. Randall L with the feed. It's taken away by Cleotis Brown. And the final shot of the ball game off the mark. Valiant effort. Long bus ride for Illinois, but they come into Assembly Hall where few teams win. And they don't. Hoosiers win it by a count of 62-53. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, Demir Kripalya for Illinois, Luke Recker for Indiana. Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. It's been a Chevrolet tradition for 28 years. Nine-point Indiana victory. To 53, they go to one and one in Big Ten play, and Illinois is zero and one. 
Luke Recker leads the way. 62-53 was the final. For Billy Packer, I'm Vern Lundquist saying goodbye from Bloomington. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports.